Hi, everybody, and welcome back to part two of um, Let Me Call You Tweetheart. And we're going to do three more blocks in this video. Um, we did three blocks in the first video. It was tree one, tree two, and then the flower block. And this will be tree three, four, and then it's the love banner block. So there's only six um, blocks in this one. So it was it makes it fun and nice and we can do a couple videos and have all of the blocks videos. So, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and, um, second here, it's a little dark down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and work on tree three. So the first block is going to be that we're going to work on is tree three. This one's going to have the heart, the word heart, and then I'm in love with you. And then there's the bottom, kind of the center of the tree and a few little leaves and a couple of little um, hearts in it. So we're going to start this one out similar to we did what we did with tree one and two. Um, and this is going to finish, let's see, four by four and a half by ten and a half or four. It's going to, the finish size is four by ten. Okay, so I have my pieces here. There's a, just a few little appliques. I've got um, some red glitter vinyl, and we're going to take that, let's take that uh, clear plastic carry sheet off of there so we don't forget to do that so here's our red glitter vinyl and we got some pink fabric for one of the hearts and then here is um, one for one of the leaves this is a darker green and then we've got a little piece for the trunk of the tree okay and then um yeah i guess that's it and then our background fabric so our background fabric is over here let me grab this here so here's our background fabric and it's another print with the white on white tone on tone which I think think is cool so they did six different ones um, and then this has again also has my shape flex with um, iron onto the back okay so you put that on the back of your your background piece okay and I got my see what have I got here I've got my um, 8 by 12 hoop so I'm still using that 8 by 12 hoop all of these blocks end up being 10 inches or 10 and a half inches long so you really need an 8 by 12 hoop for this one and then um, you can do the um, Let's see, I've got no show mesh in the hoop. I've got my regular white um, pre-wound bobbin in the bobbin. And I have white thread in the um, needle because I'm going to do the quilting first like we have been. And that is going to be quilted in white. So let's see here. So we need to get our design. Let me bring you over here to the screen and we'll get our design. And we're going to use the same quilting design. It's Animal 4 four by ten so let's go get our quilting design first I've got it on my stick and let's see Kimberbell quilting and it's animal four it's gonna be the little birds again and then we're gonna do block by block is what we're doing and then those are gonna be the four by tens so four by ten let's see four by eight four by ten so here's the four by ten so we're going to get that one and I'm going to set that one. Okay, so we got our quilting design and now we're going to go get our design and this is tree three. So I'm going to hit add down here and I'm going to go get my, let me call you Tweetheart embroidery and then we're going to get tree three. So let's see here. Here it is. This is heart. I'm in love with you. So it's this one. Okay, and then we're going to hit set. Now this one has some specialty instructions about where to put the design. So let's read these carefully so we get this right. So we need to do some moving around here. So it says to center both files horizontally. So that means this way. So they are um, centered this way. But it says align the bottom placement line of the embroidery file with the bottom edge of the quilting file. So in other words, we want to move this one down and I'm going to hit edit up here and move. And I want it, I want it to stay centered, so I don't want to move that. So I'm just going to move it down. And we want the bottom, it says align the bottom placement line of the embroidery file with the bottom edge of the quilting file. So we're just going to move everything down so the bottoms line up like that. Because our quilt, where our um, seam allowance is going to be, is we want the 
tweet and the heart to basically be right next to each other because it's it's actually one word like sweetheart it's going to be one word so we want those to be lined up so let's make sure we got them all lined up there i think that looks pretty good so the so the goal is to get our tweet and our heart as close together as possible in that seam allowance right here so i have the bottom aligned of the design aligned with the bottom of the quilting file okay so i think that's correct that looks good so i'm going to hit okay and i'm going to hit embroidery all right so then we're going to start with the quilting as usual so give me a second here. Let me move the camera. Oops. I'm going to pull the cord out. And the first step is always going to be our placement line for the batting. Let me find a piece of batting here. Got my little chunks of batting up here. Ooh, I got warm. I may have to turn my fan on this evening. So I've been anxious to work on this. I thought it was so cute. I cut out the kit last week and uh, I, it's been fun to be able to work on this. I just got done hanging up some pictures. I uh, brought a bunch of pictures from dad's house down and I, I've been hanging pictures up. So I'm, I'm done with that for a while. Okay, so let's see. I think we're going to have to turn it this way. Yep. Okay, so we'll turn it this way. And then we're going to cover up. So the next step is going to be we're going to cover up that placement line and we're going to So the second step is always going to be our tack down line for our quilting. This all set. I think the first thing we're going to be doing is yes, we're going to be working on some branches for the tree. Some of them are sewn and some of them are applique. Got a big black blob in my batting here. There we go. It's going to go around it twice. So it's real important that when you're doing all of these that you read carefully. I'm so glad that they started doing this because when the first, the, in the first ones, the uh, pillows and stuff that they did with their, their um, quilting designs they didn't put the instructions about how to do these and so like I remember when um, people were doing um, I think it was it wasn't can was it candy cane lane or the um, the patriotic one people were getting their their designs in the wrong place because they weren't moving their designs down so I'm so glad that they give you instructions now so let's go ahead and get this trimmed and then we'll put our placement line on for the fabric. I think there might be enough for another block here. There's only one more of these long skinny blocks and then there's going to be another one that goes kind of at the bottom. Let's see here. I'm having trouble trimming tonight. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to put our placement line on. So step number three is always the placement line for the fabric. I enjoy these, um, these 18 inch pillows so much. They're such a nice size and you can set them on your couch or in a chair. So I'm going to put this out on my couch. I thought this would be cute. I actually have a cat now that doesn't bother a lot of my stuff. So it's nice. I can actually put things out now that are nice. <laughs> this cat doesn't really. The only thing she bothered was um, the bows on the Christmas presents. For some reason, she likes bows, but she doesn't really bother anything else. Okay, so we're going to lay this piece of fabric over that placement line. Kind of try to get it centered. And then step number four is always the placement line. I'm sorry, the tack down line for the fabric. So get that. And then step number five will be the quilting. Okay. 
So then step number five will be the quilting and it's going to be the cute little branches with the birds again. So I'll get this started and I'll stop the camera for a moment while this is stitching. It takes a little while for this to stitch. Most of these last ones only take about 25 minutes or so. We have a little applique to do, so. All right, so I'll be back in a moment when this is done. Okay, so we got our quilting done. It looks really cute. And like I said um, before, you don't have to buy the quilting designs to do these. You may already have some of the other Kimberbell quilting designs. There's lots of different ones that would work really well for this. I think the reason this one's so cute, though, is it has the little birds and the little twigs like the tree in it. So um, I just, I had to buy them when I saw it. I thought, oh, I just have to have those. So I bought it with the design. But you don't have to. If you have other ones, use other ones. They'll be just as cute. Okay, so the next step then is going to be, so like if you were using the traditional method here, this is where you would do steps number one, two, three, four, and like, you know, these steps here, four through seven, one through seven, I should say. And um, these are the ones that you do if you're not quilting in the hoop. Okay, so we're going to skip like one through seven here. And then we're going to go on to number eight, which is going to be the branches. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to skip through. There's actually only one sewing, one sewing thing that we're going to, um, that we're going to skip. And that's like an alignment thing that we don't need. So we'll have, we'll have all the alignment stuff that we need uh, with, because we already moved the design. So I'm just going to skip through that. We don't need that. And then I'm going to go to the branches. So I'm going to put in my, my uh, 0145 Nestle's. It's kind of my nice brown that I've been doing my tree in. So I'm going to move my white. I'm going to put my brown in. And then we're going to do the branches. Now this is the, the stitched branches. So these will take a few minutes. And then we'll come back and do a little bit of applique. Got to get my find my brown here. So we're going to do these. And this will, this will take a minute to stitch out, so I'll just get it started, and then I'll stop the camera and come back when it's done. But it, it takes a little bit. This one takes a few minutes. So, all right, so we'll get this started. And we're, this is going to be the start of the branches for the tree, and then the part, the, the middle part is going to be an applique. So then, and then there's just a couple of little appliques in this one. This one didn't have as many appliques in it as the, some of the other ones did. So, all right. So here's our branches, and I'll come back in a moment when we're done with those and ready for the next step. Okay, so I finished up the branches. Those are pretty good-sized branches. There was two of them. There's one over here, too. And now we're going to go do, oh, it's going to do the applique. So the first step for the app, at applique, of course, is going to be our placement line for our fabric. So let me grab my fabric here. We'll do our, and I'm leaving my Nestle thread in there. We're going to do, and this is more a bigger piece, so this is going to be kind of the tree trunk. So we're getting down towards the bottom. The next one, I think, is the bottom of the tree. So it's going to be um, the bottom of the tree, and then there's going to be some flowers, I think, or something on it. So, All right, so this is going to be our applique. So I'm going to lay my applique over the top with my brown fabric here. And then I'm going to do the next step, which will be the tack down line for that applique and then this one's going to be um, the decorative stitch so again I always use my matching thread for my tack down line just so that it doesn't show through the decorative stitch it's a little more open stitch so we're going to trim this after it's done here and then we're going to do oh then we're going to do some hearts so we'll get this trimmed, and then we'll do the decorative stitch. Okay. So here's my... Let me see if we can get the trim in here without having to pull this out. I may have to pull it out so I can reach. I'm using these double curve ginger, six inch ginger scissors. I really like these. We have them up on, on the shieldsewingcenter.com website. If you don't have these, these are wonderful scissors for trimming. And you can get real close and they work very, they work well. Um, 
they, they get get closer than a lot of the I don't like the scissors with the little the little duck bills on them very well because they they just don't get very close so then the next step is going to be the decorative outline and this is I think it's just going to do the two yeah it's just going to do the two sides I think so it's going to do that and then I'll come back in a minute and we'll start working on the little hearts Okay, so we got our little decorative stitch. It just went up the two sides, and then these are going to be uh, the ends. The ends are going to be in the seam allowance, so that they didn't they didn't go over those. But we're going to go ahead and work on a, one of the little um, hearts. So this is the little pink heart. So I put in my uh, one zero zero two bedtime pink. So it's that real light pink. And the first thing we're going to do is our um, placement line for the fabric. Then this is the fabric pink. So we'll do our, and this one I think then is probably going to be the de a decorative outline too. So we'll keep that pink in there to do the tack down a second. I got a little tail in here I have to get rid of again as usual. I spend most of my time clipping these little tails. There we go. Okay, so we're going to lay our fabric down over the placement line and then we will stitch the tack down. This one really didn't require a lot of fabric. I mean, there's actually more, a lot more, um, what I want to say, like embellishment type fabrics in this one than there was actual, actual fabric. It was pretty, pretty simple to cut this one. I just cut it out of my stash. I did have to buy a little bit of the pink for the outline, for like the borders and, or the, the flanges in the back. I didn't have the exact one, but I found one that was real close to it. So that's the only thing I had to buy. I mean, I had all the other fabric. And I had almost all of the embellishments. It was mostly just some glitter vinyls and a little bit of fabric. And then um, some glitter vinyls and some um, the polka dot glitter vinyls. There we go. Make sure I get that. Okay, and this is going to be a decorative stitch too. So we're going to get this one started. And so I tried to trim pretty close so that it would cover up nicely on the edge. And then I think we're going to go and do a, oh, the next one's going to be the red for the glitter vinyl. Get my glitter vinyl over here. And we'll move on to the red thread for that, which is number 800. Second here, I dropped all my pencils on the floor. I'm making notes as I'm going here. So there's our little decorative sti stitch on that. And now I'm going to switch to my red. And we're going to do the red glitter heart. And there was some pull flowers in this. And there was a little vinyl. Like the, the, the pink vinyl. I think we get to use that maybe in the next block. No, maybe not in the next block. It might be one more yet. Might be the last block. I can't remember where we there's some there's a kind of a flower that they did with the pink vinyl it was really pretty all right so now we're going to do the placement line for our glitter vinyl move my thread over here so i can we'll do our pressing here in a moment had to go get my pressing cloth i always leave it in the wrong place okay so i'm going to lay this oops i got another tail this is pulled out of there and then I'm going to lay my glitter vinyl down on top of my little heart and we'll do the tack down line for that and then we're going to trim it now that one is going to be raw edge so we'll just trim it and then we're going to press it down with the iron okay I'm going to get my glasses on here these are pretty matchy so hopefully my microphone's, looks like my microphone's working okay. I was having a little trouble with the mic. I have trouble with the, the um, getting the volume set when I do videos that are not live. The live videos, it's neat because StreamYard actually takes care of the audio, like, you know, volume and stuff. But I have to be real careful when I make videos. Oops, got a little string. I have a little trouble making videos with the computer software because it has to be 
I have to care, be careful of my microphone volume. Okay. Looks like it's okay though. Okay. So let's trim that. Oops. Can't get a hold of these. And then it looks like I've got a couple little spots here I need to fix. Now you've got to be careful if you do that and you have this little piece here. You don't want to iron that onto your fabric because <laughs> it will. <laughs> Okay, ask me how I know about that one because I've done that before. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to my little, I've got my little mini iron over here. I'm just going to flip this up so you can see. Got my little mini iron over here, and we're going to press this down with our pressing cloth. I've got my wool mat over here. I'll just press this down for about 20 seconds. I just love this little iron because it fits in everything. Okay, should be enough. I'll let it cool just a minute before I start sewing on it again. And now I think we're going to move on to the leaf. So this is going to be the moss green. This is the darker of the green, green felts. Move this back over here. And so this is going to be my moss green. So let me get that color. Oops, Let's see if I can throw the thread on the floor here. This one, so this is 515 Moss Green, and it's going to do, just like we did on the last two tree parts, um, this is going to do like a little, um, it's going to do like a little placement line for the felt, and we're going to lay our felt on, and then it's going to do a tuck down. tail out of there. Otherwise that kind of show. Still got a little tail there, don't I? Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to lay our little piece of felt over that. It's going to do a tack down and then it's going to do that little basting line and we'll trim around the basting line, but then we will um, remove the basting stitches later. So it's going to do the tack down and then it does the base. And I've still got my moss screen in there. And now we're getting ready to do the words. This was actually a pretty fast one. Okay. So the next step is going to be the words, I'm in love with you. And I'm going to do that in the dark gray. Actually, we better trim our better trim our felt first here so get it out of the way because we might have to don't want to sew over it I will leave the basting stitches in there just for now and we'll do that later let me go to take this part I'll take those out Let's see here I'm gonna do a very good job on that one that's a little leaf my goodness so let's see here we'll do a little bit better job at trimming that yeah, that's better. Okay, got that trimmed. And then I'm going to put in my dark gray to do the words. Let's see, where did I put it? Here it is. Oops. Got thread all over the place up here. So this is the words, I'm in love with you. And then we'll do the word heart. Okay. I just thought this was such a cute pillow. It's fun to do Valentine's stuff. I've never really had any, you know, had anybody to like give me anything for Valentine's Day or give anybody anything for Valentine's Day, but I like, I don't know why I like Valentine's Day. I guess I like pink. So Valentine's Day reminds me of pink and red hearts and stuff. So that's why I've always liked to do Valentine's items. Get this little tail out of there. All right. So I'll, I'll, Turn the, I'll turn the camera off for a moment while this is stitching because this is going to be like a triple stitch. It's going to take a few minutes of several words. And then we'll come back and we'll um, look at heart. Okay, so there's the I'm in love with you. Isn't that pretty? Looks like it has to almost have to put the, t, the cross on the T yet. And then we're going to move on to the word heart. 
and that's done in the rose pink, which is number 1242. So I'm going to get my 1242 up here. It's rose pink. And then this is the one, it's going to be just like tweet. Um, it has a little white uh, decorative stitch. I'm going to make sure I get the right pink here. Got two pinks up here. So this is rose pink. Okay, and this is the word heart. So we're going to get this one going here. And this one's going to take a little while to stitch out, so I'll come back when it's about stitched, and then we'll do the little white decorative stitch through the center. And then this one is almost done. There's just one more step after that. Okay, so there's the word heart and see the, you can see this is about where the, the seam allowance is going to be and they're just going to butt right up together, the word tweet and the word heart so that they should, they're, they're one word. And then the next step is going to be the little decorative white line through there. And so I'm going to put my white thread back in. And I also went ahead and took the little, the little basting stitches out of my little my little leaf like we did before so that's that one's done and then let's see there's one more step after that so we're going to do like a, it's like a, a trimming line it's just a placement line for us to help all right so i'm putting my white in and it's going to do the little decorative stitch down through the middle there oops second here get my hoop back in there we go oops and then we're off to do the, the little decorative stitch. Okay, so there's our little decorative stitch down through the pink with the white. And now the last stitch is going to be those little placement lines to help us for the trimming on the sides. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just put um, my gray back in, my dark gray, just so I can see it when I'm getting ready to line it up. And then I'll show you how to trim the block. So let me get my gray in here. And then we'll be, I'll get my stuff set up while this is stitching, and I will show you how to trim the block. Because the very last step on this one, again, just like the other ones, we, we do not stitch out. It's just a kind of a, a placement holding uh, place to find. Okay, so we're all done with the little placement lines. The very last step, number, the very last step in the in the uh, design, we don't stitch out. Remember, they were just kind of like placeholders, and it was sort of like the last block, couple blocks we've done. So we're done with this block, and I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the hoop. I already took the basting stitches out of my little, um, oops, I can hear me get my hoop out of the way. I don't drop everything on the floor. I spend most of my time dropping things on the floor. Okay, so there's our block, and we got our, our placement stitches in here so we know where we're going to trim. And so if you give me just a moment, I'm going to move my, um, my camera over so that we can do the trimming. Okay, so we got our block ready to trim here. This one's going to be very similar to the last two that we've done, that we're going to use all three rulers. Oops, second here. I've got them stuck under my arm here. Okay. And again, the same speci specialty instructions that we're going to nest them all together and then we're going to use the, um, those little tick marks to bring this in and put the, I don't know if you can see these, but the little arrows are going to be on the tick marks. So it tells us to do that in the instructions. So I'm putting my arrows on those little tick marks. Yeah, it says use the trimming guides to center the block vertically, aligning the tick marks in the trimming, yeah, trimming with the center marks on the rulers. Okay. And then I'm going to put my medium-sized ruler. So we're using all three of the rectangle rulers for this. I'm trying to keep everything lined up. And then we're going to put the big one on. Let's see, oops, get it on there. And we're going to make sure we got those little tick tick marks lined up with our little arrows there. All right. So these we're only going to remember the the small one or the first cut we're going to make is just along the long sides of this, is because it's going to be four and a half. 
So I'm taking my rotary cutter and putting against the rule inside of the ruler and then pushing forward. I kind of start up a little ways, pull back into the corner, and then push forward. And we're going to roll this round. I love the Smartelli roundabouts. So if you have one of these, it really works. These are also up on the ShieldSewingCenter.com website. And I just love these. They're so much easier to trim these. And then we're going to remove the two middle ones, just like we did before. So I've got the two middle ones out. And then we're going to trim the ends. Yes, so we're going to trim the ends. And that's going to be 10 and a half. So let me push this up just a little bit so you can see the end here. I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start up a little bit, pull back into the corner, and move forward. And then we'll do the other end. And we're not doing the sides. We're just doing the ends this time. Pull back and then push forward. Okay. I'm going to take that off for a moment. And then we're going to connect the lines here because we only have partial lines here. So I'll just take my ruler and line it up here. And then we will trim that corner to each one of the corners here. The orange pop rulers make it real easy. And, you know, these work with, for other things besides just Kimbervale projects because they're very common sizes of blocks. So these are blocks that you use in a lot of different um, quilts. So I use these rulers actually quite often. Okay. That side. I always have a little trouble with the edges. There we go. And then get this one. And connect the dots. There we go. Okay. So there is, I have a little spot that didn't cut right there. Looks like I need a new blade. Okay. So there is our block. And this is tree three. So we have one more of the tree blocks to do. And that's going to be the bottom of the tree. And then we're going to do the block that has the, um, the uh, banner on it. So that's going to be kind of the top left-hand corner block. But this is going to be, these are down towards the bottom now. So okay, so I'll go ahead and turn the camera off for a moment while I set up for the next block. And we'll start doing tree four. Okay, so we're ready for the next block. So this is tree four. So this is the bottom of the tree. And so we're going to have some little flowers and stuff. Now there's one little thing I'm not sure about. We're going to use some vinyl and put some glitter underneath so I'm not sure how that glitter is going to go in there there the way they were describing it it may be a little hard so we'll see how that works but these are the items we need then for block four so in my little kit I had my background fabric of course this is another um, uh, tone on tone and then I've got my shape flex of course um, ironed on the back Okay, so I've got that one. And then we're going to have a piece of ap applique for the tree. So there's our tree trunk applique. And then we're going to have an applique for the little heart flower that has, it's the polka dot glitter. So I've got that one. Okay, we're going to take that um, carrier sheet off of it. Might as well do it right now while we're thinking of it. If I can get it off. There we go. This is the polka dot glitter. I love this. So like that. And then we're going to have another flower with the fringe in it. So we're going to be doing, we're going to change the bobbin cases again for that. We also have an applique made of cork. So there's a little piece of cork here. And then here's that, that kind of pink um, vinyl that we're going to put the glitter. It's like iridescent glitter. And I had a little vial of it. So we're going to see how this works. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go in because they show it like, sewing part of it down and then there's like a top and there's an opening and I'm like why can't I just put a little bit underneath so we'll we'll see I might actually put it down a little clump of it down before I sew because I've always done my vinyl with glitter in it like that so we'll see how it goes um, and when we get there so that this will be a learning experience for us all so okay and I'm going to use again my 8 by 12 hoop I've got my my um embroidery bobbin uh, my embroidery bobbin thread in my pre wound in and I'm going to use the same size hoop so it's 8 by 12 and I've got my no shell mesh in 
the hoop. And so we're going to get our um, quilting design. So this one's going to be floral six. So this one's going to be the other quilting design. Same size. So let's go to four by ten. Let's see my quilting. And this is floral six. So we're going to go down a little further. I don't want to miss it. F. Oops, I think I did. Got to go back up a little bit. Floral five, floral six. There it is. And then um, this one's going to be the four by ten horizontal. So the flowers are going to go this way. So we're going to go to embroidery files, PES. And then we're going to go to the four by ten. But it's going to be four by eight, four by eight, four by ten. So we're going to go. Um, so we're going this way and it says to do them horizontally. So I think I want, since this is the up and down, I want them to lay this way. I think, let me look on the picture and see if it shows a little bit. I think we want them to go this direction. Let me see if it shows me. This is the... Does it say if I touch this one? This one says floral. I'm not sure which one I want. If I want this one, maybe we want that one actually because when we turn it, the other one was going up and down. So that one is the horizontal one. They call this one the vertical, I think. So let me look at the picture if it shows in the picture at all. It's very difficult to see in here. This is kind of a, this was one of those ones that I know that the flowers went, let me look at, let's look at our other block. I think I want them to go the same direction as the other block. So the other block was going up and down. Okay. So I think we are going to choose this one because when we turn the block like this, it's going to be going up and down. So I think that's the one we want actually. So this is the horizontal one and this is the vertical so I think that's, this is the one we want. I think we want that one. So it matches this when we turn it. Cause you know, we're going to turn the block like this and they're going to be going up and down then. So that's, I think that's the way I want it. Okay. So we'll choose that one. And then let's see, whoops, I got to find what the next part is. We're going to set that. And that's the four. Yeah. Four by 10. I'm going to hit add down here. And we're going to go get um, tree four. It's the one with all the little flowers at the bottom. Let's see here. Let me call you Tweetheart. Find the files. Let's see. Here it is. Whoops. Must have to go down another one. There we go. It's right here. And then set. Now this one says align the block embroidery file with the quilting design file so that both are centered. So we're just going to leave this one centered just as it is. So we don't have to do anything special with this. And then all of these flowers at the bottom are going to be going up and down. So, so they're all going to be don't go in the same direction. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what they were intending there. Okay. You can't really see in the pictures. I was look, trying to look in the pictures, but I can't really see in the pictures. Look in the back and see if it shows anything in the back. It's very difficult to see. Some of the, the pictures in the instructions are just very kind of generated pictures, so you don't can't see the actual stitching. But I think I like that. I want all my flowers to be going up and down like that. So I think we'll choose that one. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, we're head embroidery. And the first step on this one is going to be the applique for the tree trunk. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we have to do our quilting first. You guys got to watch me. So I have, we have to do the quilting first. So I have my white already in my needle. See, I, I was thinking it, but I just didn't say it. Okay, so we have to do our quilting first. So the first step, of course, will be the placement line for the batting. You guys are supposed to be watching me. It's kind of... About seven o'clock on Sunday evening on Christmas Day, <laughs> so I'm kind of I'm getting kind of tired all of a sudden. So I I uh, but I'm enjoying working on this, and I wanted to keep going so I get 
get these these blocks done. I think they're kind of neat. And the next ones are going to be like the little banner. Um, we're going to quilt the the block that goes in the quilt, but then we're going to make the little banner. So that'll be really fun. All right, so there's our placement line. I think there's enough batting left on this chunk. So I think we can put this one on here. And then we're going to do the tack down line. And once we get all of our fabric on, then we'll start with the tree trunk. On this one. And this one just has quite a few appliques on it. And the, um, but that, that vinyl, I'm a little worried about that vinyl. <laughs> not sure how I'm going to get that glitter in there. I kind of look through the instructions and I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure that that's going to work, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can do it. I usually, when I've done like glitter, I've done some like, um, I want to say snow globes. And normally what they tell you to do is to put like a little scoop of the glitter stuff, um, underneath the vinyl and then lay the vinyl down on top of it. But this is telling you to like sew part of it and then stuff it in. And I'm like, how am I going to get that in there? But we'll, we'll see if we can do it. That's the way the instructions say, so they should, they must be able to do it that way. All right. So now we're going to trim the batting here. Okay. I was doing so well too, and I hadn't even forgotten the quilting. So I was doing so well, but you know, I always have to forget something. But we're getting it done. Okay, so get the batting trimmed. And then we're going to put the, the third step's always the placement line for the fabric. So we'll do that next. I'm not doing a very good job trimming, am I? Really need some new scissors. So I think that's one of the things I'm going to order myself this next week. Is get some new scissors. These are getting pretty dull. Okay, so here's my placement line for the fabric. Let me get my fabric ready here. And then we'll lay our fabric down. I thought it was cool that they used all the different tone-on-tone um, -tone whites, so it gives it just a little texture. It's kind of cool. And I think I actually substituted a couple. Um, I think I substituted a couple because I, I was missing two of them. But I think they still look nice. Okay, so then we're going to get this laid in here over our batting as close to centered as we can. Okay, And then we're going to do the tack down for the fabric. When they called for the iridescent glitter to put underneath that one little flower, I'm like, oh golly, I'm not a big glitter fan. I just, I, I like the looks of it. I just don't like to work with it because it's usually all over. So we may be experiencing glitter being all over here soon. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so then the next step is going to be the quilting and it's going to do the little flower rows this way. Okay, so I'll get them started and then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera because it does take a little while to do these. There's a lot of a lot of stitches in this particular quilting design. So really cute though. I like it. Very different than some of their other ones. So okay, so I'll be back when this is done and then we'll move on to the tree trunk applique. Okay, so we got all of our quilting, and so the quilting is horizontal on the block this way, but when we turn the block to lay the way it's supposed to be, it's going to be going up and down like the other block was, so I think I'm going to like that better. Um, I think I, either way would have been fine, but I like I wanted them going, both going the same direction, so I hopefully I've chose the right one, but it's personal choice. So Okay, so now the next step is going to be the applique tree trunk. So I've got my Nestle's number 0145 in the needle, and I'm going to put my placement line down. Just a second here, I've got to find all my, my applique pieces here. So we're going to put the 
place to wind down for the tree trunk. And then I'm going to lay my fabric down. Really like the, the brown fabric. I've always liked this print. It was originally, I think, done for one of the quilts, and then they added it to their basics line. I just like it because it's very, has a, just a little teeny bit of a print, but it's not too much that it's obnoxious or anything. Okay. And we're going to put our plate, our tack down line, and then we're going to trim close to the stitches. Now this is again going to be a decorative stitch, so we want to make sure that we um, trim pretty close so that it doesn't leave any little hairs or anything on the sides. So the decorative stitches are not as wide. Okay, let's so get this trimmed. I'm going to try to trim pretty close. Helps if you pull up a little bit on the fabric. Don't pull too hard because you can pull it out from under the stitches, but if you pull up a little bit, it just gives it a little bit of a stretch, and then you can get a little closer to the stitches, especially when you're doing these decorative. I left my Nestle's thread in there. There we go. All right. And then it's going to do the decorative stitch along the two edges. And then we're going to move on to, oh, it's going to do the, the little cork applique next. So it's going to do our decorative stitches. And then we'll go on to some applique. Why it did that, I don't know, but it just decided to do one line and then go back. Now it's going to do the decorative stitch, and then we'll come back and do the cork applique. Okay, so we got our little decorative stitches along the tree trunk here, and the next step is going to be um, a placement line and some little, oh, a little arrow for the cork applique second. I mean, I'm going to use my number 1141 shredded wheat for that. That's kind of a tan for that. Put that on here. But it is going to do like the placement line and a little arrow design on either side of the where the cork will be. And then I think it's going to do some flower petal or some leaves, I'm sorry, and get ready for the um, glitter vinyl. Yeah, so it's doing like a little cross, a little arrow from on either side of the placement line there. And then we'll lay this down. And this is going to be a raw edge applique. I think I want this to go this way. Let's put it this way. And I'll lay this over the placement line. And then we'll hold this down and it will do the tack down line. It's going to be um, raw edge, so we'll just trim it. Find my scissors again. I love cork. I don't use it very often, but um, Kimberbell started to use it. I think it's cool. All right, so then we're going to trim this. Not real super close to the stitches. Uh, we're going to leave a little little edge because this is just raw edge applique, so there's not going to be any satin stitch or anything over this. So you can just you'll be able to see that little bit of a um, the little arrow sticking out right there, and the little fin or like the feathers of the arrow are on the other side. So we'll get that uncovered so you can see it. Now this the backing is the same color as the front, so it isn't too bad to trim. Okay, oops, there we go. I think I need to do a little bit of work down here at the bottom though. 
didn't like I like I did too good of a job down here. So let's see if we can get that evened out a little bit. That looks pretty good. Just a little bit off the end, and it looks like I got a little tail sticking in here too. Let's see if I can get a hold of it so I can trim it off. Yeah. All right, so there's our little heart. That looks pretty good, except that I just nipped a little spot out of my cork. There we go. Straighten it out. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm not a very good trimmer sometimes, so especially if I'm in a hurry. It's harder to trim when you got the hoop in the machine because it's hard to turn these, especially the long ones. The short ones are easier to turn in the, in the machine. Okay, let's get all that off of there. Okay, so the next step is going to be, well, I've got to put the hoop in the right way though. Let's turn this over. There we go. The next step is going to be moss green, and it's going to be some of the leaves for the flowers. So I'm going to, the moss green is my darker green. So we'll get that going here, ready for some of the flowers. These have been really fun. This is, these have been really, really fun. Okay. So we're going to do the, some stems and some leaves for the flowers. Okay, so there's my little leaves for my flowers. And then I think the next step, this is page 25 in the instructions, just so you know, on step 12. And this is, um, oh, there's going to be a real cute little halo that you put behind the red glitter vinyl. So this is going to be in the teal. So I'm going to get my thread out of the way here. And this is going to be in the 1048 teal ice. This will go behind our piece of glitter vinyl. So that'll be the first thing we'll do is the glitter vinyl flower. It's going to be a heart. And then we'll do this step first. This is like the little halo. And then there'll be a placement line. So we're going to switch over to red thread once this is done. And, uh, oh, it's cute. It's going to be like a little single line Cute little motif stitch that's very cute. I'm still worried about the next steps where we have to put the glitter in underneath the vinyl. I'm not sure if I'm, I like the way they're going to do it, so I may have to change it. <laughs> so I'll be back in a moment when this is done and we'll get ready for the red. Okay, so I'm stitching out the placement line for my red glitter vinyl. I switched over to my 800 red. Now I've got my polka dot glitter vinyl here. So we're going to stitch out the placement line first. Second here, I think I've got a tail sticking up as usual. And I will lay this down and then we'll stitch it down and trim it. There we go. Alright. So lay the polka dot glitter vinyl down over the placement line and then I'm just going to hold it so it'll and then stitch the tack down line then we'll trim it. And this is also going to be raw edge applique. And then, of course, we'll press it with our pressing cloth before, we're, before we go on. I think I have to get my glasses out. That's pretty matchy again. Okay, so I'm pull this out. We're going to trim this close to the stitches. I'm not going to get really super close but just a little bit away since this is raw edge applique. This, I had to order this vinyl. I didn't have the, the polka dot, red polka dot. I had all the other colors except red. I don't know why I didn't have the red, but must have used it. I have a lot of vinyls and stuff because I do do quite a few Kimberbell projects and so I keep all the little scraps though. So make sure you keep all your little scraps because there's just tons of, you don't need much for a lot of these. This was like a two and a half inch square. So I had to buy a whole tube just to get a two and a half inch square because <laughs> that's, it's real hard to find the glitter vinyl or the polka dot glitter vinyl. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to take this over to my ironing mat here. In just a second. I'm going to take this over to my ironing mat. We're going to press that down. 
just tip the camera up here so you can see the iron here. I'll lay my pressing cloth over it. Hold my little mini iron down for about 15-20 seconds. I'm putting a, just a little pressure on it. Okay. And I'll let it cool just a second before I sew on it again. And then, oh, here we go. Okay, so we're getting ready for this for this glitter, guys. So we're, we're going to see how this works. So the first step is going to be the placement line for the vinyl and I'm going to do and it's bright azalea so we're going to use the, the hot pink for this flower so let me put my hoop back in here it's going to go over here and do this one I think get my bright azalea so put the camera down back down here sorry so I'm getting nervous I'm not sure about this I have a hard time with glitter because I usually have it everywhere. So we'll see how Jan does with this. Because this is not normally the way I do it. So we're I may do it the way I normally do. So let's see. So we're going to get our placement line down here first. And then we'll see how we're going to do this. You need about a teaspoon. They say a teaspoon of, vine, of uh, glitter. So you don't need a ton of glitter in there. And it's kind of an iridescent glitter. I got this in little bottles. I think I got this maybe at Joann's. I think they had it. It's just, oh gosh, everything's on the floor. There we go. So it's kind of a little, like, it's like iridescent and it's a kind of a hexagon glitter. Okay, so normally when I do glitter like this under the vinyl, they're telling me at this point, in the instructions, this is on page 25 of, tree four to, to lay the vinyl down and then it's going to like sew it part way down and then you're supposed to try to stuff the glitter in the top i'm a little nervous about that so i think what i what i normally do is i take my glitter and i just put a little bit in the center here like that and I try to keep it away from the stitching lines. So I think I'm going to do it this way. Because so I'm not sure. And then we might be able to move it around a little bit. I'm just very nervous about getting that in there with part of the vinyl on. So I'm just going to kind of do that. And then I'm going to lay this down. And, and the thing is that this is a little bit staticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down fast like that so that it doesn't get in anything. <laughs> I just kind of laid it down fast, and I'm going to tape this down. Okay, so you don't want to, you're trying not to get the glitter in the stitching line, okay? So I'm just going to, and I'm going to hold this side. And then the next step is going to actually be just like the bottom section. Okay, so it's going to stitch like down towards the bottom. I was just nervous about trying to, get the glitter inside that vinyl with just that little opening okay so it did make it kind of bounce a little bit but i think it's okay all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this out a little bit and we're going to just take a little bit of so they, they wanted me to try to put it in now and i'm like how am i going to get it in there so I'm just going to kind of swirl it in there and get some of these pieces out of the way. But the only bad thing, especially this time of year here in Iowa, it's so dry and everything is so staticky that it's so easy to get everything stuck. So I'm trying to get it away from the stitching lines so it doesn't get stitched in. But you know what? If it does, it does. So I, that's how I did it. I did it first. I kind of held it down. And then it's stitched. So that's the way I usually have done glitter. So now we're going to go ahead and the next step, this is the same color, it's that bright azalea. So the next step is going to be the top part of it. And it's going to close it up. And then we'll trim it. I'll have to show you my new little toy I got. And that might help me here. 
I'll show you my new, new little toy that I got for Christmas for myself. That We might need that right now because it's going to have glitter all over. I just hate glitter. So let me go grab my little toy and I'll show you. Maybe we can use it to get some of the glitter off of here. Okay, so we're going to trim our vinyl. Let me get this tape off of here. I really like that pink. It's really pretty. So we're going to trim the vinyl. And I'm not going to trim. I'm going to leave just a little bit around the edge. I have a hard time with trimming vinyl. So let me get this a little closer to me. So I can see what I'm doing. This is really pretty. I don't think I've used any of the pink vinyl before. I've used the green and I've used the clear, but I don't think I've ever used the pink. Isn't that pretty? All right. So we're going to trim vinyl. And I'm going to leave maybe an eighth of an inch or so around the outside edge. I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. But as you can see, we kind of have some glitter. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of glitter. It sure is pretty under there, but I don't like to work with it because I always have it everywhere. But I found the coolest little toy for my card making because I also do a lot of... Um, embossing powder and and it's so messy i love the looks of it and it's so pretty but it's just messy all over so i found this darling little thing it's from we are memory keepers and it's a little vacuum cleaner so it's made for glitter and for like embossing powder so i just touch it and it's it's rechargeable you can you can hook it up and charge it so i'm just going to touch it here and see if we can get some of these little pieces of glitter off of our <laughs> embroidery here because I got little pieces of glitter everywhere. Ooh, this light works just so great. It's got like little feet on it, little 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 um, brushes on it, so you can kind of brush and get it. Look at there! We got rid of all the little. So that's a cute little toy. I that might come in handy for lots of things. Might work for like um, some of the little like. Oops. Might help with some of the little like clips if you got like little jump clip pieces and stuff too but that is really pretty but i think it worked better to put the glitter in first i was a little scared to put it in and try to figure out how to get it in that little tiny hole at the top <laughs> didn't seem like it was going to work for me so we put it in first okay that looks pretty good so i'm gonna use my little toy again see if i can get the rest of this glitter off of here i've got glitter down here too that works pretty good. I wonder if that'll work good for like like lint and stuff on your fabric. Looks pretty slick. There you go. Okay. So there's my little toy. That was from We Are Memory Keepers. I got that one of these for Judy for Christmas too. Okay, we got all the glitter cleaned up. Yay! I don't like glitter. <laughs> sure pretty, but boy, does it make a mess. Okay. Alright, so we got the glitter heart done that is really pretty i like i do like that you can see the glitter in there okay so now the next step is going to be some more leaves and these are going to be the lighter green so my light green is my fresh green so it's uh number zero two seven so i'll get that in here and we'll do the next leaf and then this one is going to be the flower like we did before with all the fringe so this will be fun. So we'll get this, this flower done too. Okay. So off to the lead. This is going to do some of the little, remember the little, um, it almost looked like rickrack. The leaves when it sewed the leaves. So. Yeah, I really like that little toy. That's a cool little, cool little device. So that's going to work good for a lot of different things, I think. But I got it for my embossing powder because I always am making a mess with embossing powder and I have it all over my work area when I'm making cards. And I love to emboss. And then it opens up here. There's like a little opening at the top here. It, it kind of pulls open and then all the stuff goes down in here. <laughs> so I thought that was cool and then you can empty it. But there's a lot of... There's a lot of... Um, static this time of year so okay 
So I'm going to be back in a moment after this gets done with the, the, the uh, stem and the leaves. And then we're going to start working on the um, that multicolored. It's going to be the same flower that we did in the first block we did. So it's going to be a flower like this with all the different colors on it. So I may just go ahead and sew it um, with all the different colors. And it's going to be um, rose pink, um, bright azalea bedtime pink and red so it's the same color so it's going to be very similar to this and then we'll do the center fringing part together because we'll switch the bobbin faces and stuff again so i'll stitch all of these little petals out and then i'll come back okay so here's the first color of our flower it's rose pink and then the second color will be the bright azalea which is that hot pink Okay, so the second color in the flower down here is going to be the bright azalea, and I think it's number 0012. So that's the second color, and it'll do some of the petals on the flower. Okay, so we got the first two colors of our petals done, and the third petal color is going to be the 1002 bedtime pink. So these are really pretty. Those are those ones that had the decorative kind of uh, programmable fills in them. And then the last color will be the red. Sorry, I bounced the camera for you. Okay, so here we're ready for the fourth color in the flower. And this is a number 800 red. And then we'll start working with the, um, with the fringed center again. Okay, so we've got our flower all done with all the different petals and all the little programmable fills. Those are so cute. And then the next step is going to be the, the we're going to do the fringed center. And just like we did the other one, what I'm going to do is it says the first one, the first step of the fringing says to change the bobbin to either water soluble, which I didn't have, or a visible color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black bobbin thread and normally with my pre-wounds I put them in the tight bobbin case and that's what I've got in here right now but I'd like this to be a little bit looser so I can see it a little bit better so I'm going to take my tight bobbin case out I'm going to put my standard one in with the black bobbin in it the black bobbin thread and this is a pre-wound but I wanted it to be a little looser so that I could see it a little bit better so get that in there I'm just going to change my bobbin case back out here and then we'll put this black bobbin thread in pre-wound bobbin and then I've got my yellow my 0104 daffodil in the in the needle Oop, I thought I hid evidently didn't put it in so we'll put it in there in the needle now and then we're going to do the first step of the fringing. So this is going to be the actual part that we're going to fringe and it's going to be the outside section with big zigzags and then um, a big satin stitch I should say and then we will do um, the next step I'm going to put back in my tighter bobbin case with my white pre-wound and then it's going to do that trapping stitch just like we did before. So this is the part that we're actually going to fringe, and with that black bobbin th or that black uh, bobbin thread in there, it'll be easier to see. So it'd be kind of the same. Uh, it's kind of the same, you know, trick if you were using the water soluble. I think that I'm going to try that def definitely next time. I just don't have any, but I had some here, and I looked and looked, but I couldn't find it. So I must not have any right now. So it's going to do the, the fringing. This will be so pretty. I, I really liked the other one. Did a good job with the with the black and the bobbin so I could really see it to do the trimming. So this is the large satin stitch. And then I'm going to switch it back to the other bobbin case with the white bobbin thread in it. The tighter bobbin, this is the one with the dot in the center. 
So I'm going to switch it back to that so that it's tighter. So see, when I turn this over, you can see, you can really see the black. Oops, second hand, pull this back a little bit so you can see, really see the black. So then we know exactly where to do the trimming. So that's why I switched to the to the little bit looser bobbin case because um, then it made it a little bit more obvious where my trimming was going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this bobbin case out for a moment. We'll put it in one more time. Put the tighter one back in, my nor one I normally use with the p blue polka dot in it. One I normally use with my pre-wound bobbins. Put my white bobbin back in. And then this is going to be the trapping stitch. So I'm leaving the same yellow thread in. And this will be the trapping stitch that's going to hold that in place so that we so that it won't all come out. So it's going to be like a little narrow satin stitch. And then we're going to do it again for the center. We'll switch to the other bobbin thread again. But this kind of goes over the very edge and just holds it in place so that it won't um, come out when we go to trim the threads. And then we'll do that. There'll be a bit, another piece that's wider in the center. Okay, so there's the little trapping stitch. And then we're going to go ahead and switch the bobbin case back out again with the black bobbin thread. So let's pull this out. Now I know this takes just a minute to do, but I this really helped me. I, I thought the fringe turned out really good on the last one. So we'll try this again. I'm going to put my standard bobbin case back in. And that black pre-wound bobbin. Put my... I'm going to play it back on, but this will just this just makes it a little looser, so I can see where I'm trimming. All right, and then we'll put this back in the machine. I left my yellow bobbin, put my yellow needle thread in, and then it's going to do the second batch of wide satin stitches. So we have two layers of fringe. And then we'll switch one more time so that it does, and it'll do the little trapping stitch in the center again. And then, I think we're about done. We're going to do that. There's some little, um, some more little, uh, like, I want to say, um, alignment stitching that will do the last stitch, the last um, step. So that we can get the we can get it trimmed properly. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my tighter bobbin case again with my white bobbin thread, and then it'll do the little trapping stitch in the center. Okay. Pull out my bobbin. Oops. That really helped though to see, especially with the black bobbin the black bobbin thread. So let's put this one back in. Oops, second hair. Get that out of there. Put my tight bobbin case in. That's the one with the blue dot in it. Put my white bobbin thread back in. After I've got to put my needle plate back on first. It's easier. Okay. Find my bobbin. Okay. And then we'll do the trapping stitch in the center. So I just left the yellow on for all four of these steps in the needle. Okay, so it's going to do the trapping stitch. Now I might just do the little um, the little uh, alignment line with the yellow. I think I should be able to see the yellow okay. Since I have it in the needle, I think I'll just use that. I was going to put dark gray in, but it's just already in the needle, so we'll, I think that should work. Okay, so then it's going to do like our, our little alignment stitches with the little tick marks so that we can get our um, trimming done properly. So I'll just leave the yellow in that. Oh yeah, I can see that. Okay, I think. So there's the top one. And the bottom one. And then the very last step, we don't sew. Again, that one's just kind of a, these are lines for design placement, so we don't have to sew the next one. So there's our alignment stitches that we need. And then 
I'm going to take this out and we'll do the, I actually might leave it in the hoop. Sometimes it's easier in the hoop to do the um, fringing. Sometimes I just leave it in the hoop and it's easier to, to trim the fringe. So I'm going to get my, maybe, well, here it is, seam ripper. And we're going to trim where the black lines are. So it's pretty obvious where it is. So we're going to trim, take our seam ripper, and we're going to rip those bobbin threads, those black bobbin threads, all the way around here. And there's an inside and an outside line. And if you were using the water soluble, this is where you would just take like a little Q-tip or your finger and just use water and dissolve the bobbin thread. So I'm going to have to get some, I, I've had that before. I used it for a couple of Hoop Sisters, different things, and I've never used it for this prop purpose, but I think it would work really well. So we're going to trim these. Oh, this one's a hard one. And remember, there's kind of a lot of stitches in here, so it may be a little tough to get in here. Because there's the those decorative stitches under there are kind of kind of thick. So, but boy, it sure helped putting that lo that looser bobbin case in too. Because then I can really see where the black bobbin thread is, so you can really see it better. This is a little bit hard in here. It's not being very cooperative. So I just do a little bit at a time. Don't try to do all of it at the same time. Just do a little section and then move on to the next section. Ugh. Tight. There we go. Okay, got that. It's better. And then let's try to do the center one here. Remember the center one was kind of tight. But you sure can see those black bobbin threads better, can't you? Glad I tried that. that I figured that would be an experiment. Sort of like the glitter <laughs> was an experiment in front of you all. So you can see what I was doing, but hopefully it worked out okay. You know, sometimes you got to learn by doing. That's what I do a lot when I'm doing this kind of stuff is I just do it. And if it doesn't work, I try it a different way. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to turn it over. But it does usually help me if I stay, keep this in the hoop. Okay, so I'm just going to use my fingernail and pull this out. Sometimes the center works better to do the center first, the inside part first. I remember I had to work at this quite a bit, so I'll get it started and then I'll turn the camera off for a minute and I'll work at it a little bit harder. So I had to go do back and forth quite a little bit to get it started. So but that, now you can see what it's going to look like with the fringe. And I'll turn the camera off for a minute and I'll keep working because it took me a few minutes to get the other one done. Okay, I think I've got our little center fringed. Looks like I might need, sometimes I need to trim a little bit. Sometimes, you know, I don't get quite as well trimmed on the back. And so I just give it a little little haircut and that helps. There's a little, little spot sticking out. So there's a little spot sticking out down here. Just give it a little trim and that usually helps. So I think I got most of the center done too. I'm trying to work on the center a little bit yet. That looks pretty good. So there's our other flower. Get the little black bobbin threads out of there. It's got a couple little black bobbin threads kind of showing yet, but I'll get that. And a little, little trim here. There's another little one kind of sticking out. But there is our flower with the fringe center. Isn't that cool? And the and the bobbin thread changing it does help. And I, I would really like to try the 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 uh water soluble because then um th then you can just take your um you can you don't have to tr cut then you just take the water water like on a two q-tip and go around the edges and it really um it just pulls it you know it'll just pull right out so i'm anxious to try that so that'll be one of my next things that i try 
All right, so now we're ready to, I'm going to set up to do the trimming. So I'm going to take this out of the hoop. I've got my little placement stitches on here. And then we're going to get this one trimmed and get ready for the last block. Okay, so we're ready to trim this uh, tree number four block. Boy, that turned out cute with the little flowers and everything. I really like that. And we're going to do the same thing that we've done for the last three blocks. So we're going to use all three of the rulers. So I'm going to get my, get, get my glasses on here. So I can see I'm going to line up those center marks on the ruler with our little tick marks. They're a little hard to see with the tick marks on the those placement lines. So I'm going to get those lined up and it's very difficult to see those I'm sure on the camera because the the marks are the little arrows on the ruler are kind of just um, kind of embossed in so they're they're not really very visible. So I'm going to get those lined up and then I'm going to put my second size ruler on. Oops, make sure I didn't move it. Okay, get this all lined up. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to put the biggest ruler on. This one's also going to be four by four and a half by ten and a half cut, but then four by ten finished. So, all right, so get that all lined up. Then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to trim it on the end here. Get my rotary cutter open. And I'm going to start up a little ways and pull back into the corner. We're just going to do the sides, the long sides here. And I'm going to flip it around this way. And pull this back and push forward. Okay. And then we're going to remove the two, make sure I'm doing it correctly. Yep, remove the two middle rulers. And then we're going to do the ten and a half inch width. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull back and go forward and I like to start up, pull back and go forward. So then it's going to be, end up being four and a half by ten and a half. And then we have to connect our dots here. We have to connect the lines. So I'm going to line this up here and connect the line here there and then we're going to go down here oh my gosh this one's so cute this is the bottom of the tree okay I'm gonna turn it over and do the other side whoops got all these little pieces don't I get laid flat and do this little side get it all lined up that and then down this side. Oops. Put this underneath here. There we go. Got all this bulky stuff we didn't want to get rid of here. There we go. Get it all lined up. Just connect the edges then. And down that side. Okay. So that is block this is the tree four block which is the bottom of the tree with our little flowers with the fringe and the um i love the little the little uh polka dot glitter vinyl one and then this one turned out good it has it has the glitter in there and we didn't get it all over the place so i'm i'm real happy <laughs> okay so now i'll go ahead and get set up for the final block Final block is going to be the love banner, and mostly what the embroidery is going to be is the banner. But then we're going to do we are going to quilt the block, but it's done a little differently because it's done. There's actually two techniques when it comes to quilting the blocks, and um, this one's going to be done with technique two because the block is already cut to the size it needs to be instead of us trimming it down. So I'll explain that. We'll do that first, and then we'll go into the banner. Okay, so we're going to move on to the love banner. Now, as I was looking at this, the instructions in the book starting on page 28 are just for the banner itself. So I thought, okay, well, what about the block? Because there's a block up there too, and it's like a filler block. Well, the filler block, as I looked at the instructions for the cutting, was cut to six and a half 
inches square. So in other words, the block is the right size for the, when we piece it together, that is, it's already the right size. So it's going to go on top of this block. So up here, so this was cut, remember, um, 10 and a half by six and a half, I believe. So we'll just check the ruler here. So the, the block, yeah, so six and a half inches wide. Okay, so the block then that we're going to do now is going to be done with technique two. So I went back and looked at the back part of the instructions. I don't always read all of the instructions first, you know. So I went, started going back towards the back of the book here where it says resources. And so right it says here up on page 34, the filler block was quilted with animal four, six by six. So the block finishes six by six, but it's going to be six and a half by six and a half. Um, the, the design or the design will be six and a half by six and a half. And it says here that the filler block quilting optional quilting design sold separately at Kimberbell.com, which I had already told you. But then the filler block is quilted using technique two found in the included instructions with the background quilting files. So what that means is that this block will not be trimmed down. It is already the correct size of six and a half by six and a half. So what we're going to do. I went ahead and got my 8 by 8 hoop out, and we're going to quilt the block first. I'm just going to quilt that first so I don't forget to do it, because we want it quilted also. And it was a 6.5 by 6.5 piece of white fabric with the with little polka dots on it. So we're going to, going to go get our, this one was done with Animal 4, so it is done with the little birds. So I'm going to go get the little bird file for the quilting, but this one's going to be six by six. So let's go get the little quilting design, and I'll show you the difference between technique one, which is what we've been doing, and technique two. So here's animal four. We're going to do embroidery, and we're going to do the block by block. And then I'm going to go find the six by six block. Here it is, right here. Okay. So the actual design is going to be six and a half by six and a half. That's why I chose my eight by eight hoop. I'm going to hit set and embroidery. Okay. So when we do technique two, we're going to start out the same way. So I'm just going to go ahead. I've got my white thread in my bobbin. I'm going to grab my chunk of batting here. And of course, the first step, you know, is always the placement line for the bat. A couple, get a couple things out of my drawer here while this is stitching. And then we'll go on to the band. So it's going to do our placement line for the batting. But this is going to be a little bit different in that we are not going to be trimming it down. It's already the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and take my batting. Oh, I might have a small chair. Will this be big enough? I don't know if it will. I think it's quite white enough. Uh, it'll just barely fit. We'll, we'll make it fit. It's going to give it a little stretch this way so it won't catch on the edge. To conserve batting. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we'll put this over the placement line and we're going to we're going to tack this down. And then we'll trim our batting. So we're going to start out the same way that we always do with our quilting. But the one thing is going to be just a little bit different. Just holding this down. It's a little bit on the shortish side, but it's still fit. Now, sometimes I don't go through and read all of the directions because I've done so many of these. I, I normally know what to do. But this one, I was like, oh, it didn't mention the block. And then I thought, oh, that's right. They cut it the right size. So then we have to do this other technique. 
And this technique is also stated in the instructions for the quilting design, so you will find it there. Okay. So I'm going to trim this then close to the stitching. So this is going to finish six by six. And this one does work very well. I've come up with a couple little tricks that really help me with this technique. And you do this um, on some of the blocks that you do for the quilts and the table toppers and the, um, the pillows and stuff. If it's been pieced, so then, then of course, that is already the right size as well. Okay, second, let me get this out of my way. Okay, so now this is a very important line. This is our fabric placement line. So normally we have a little bit of extra fabric to work with um, when we're doing this, but this time we're not going to have any extra fabric. We need to get use this line. This line's going to help us get our block all um, lined up in here. Okay, so here's our placement line for our fabric. Now, what they normally tell you in the instructions for the quilting to do is to, you know, lay it in there in between this line. And I just left my white in, but you can see the stitching line. But what I found that works really well for me is I use my fabric glue stick. And of course, you know, I'm out of fabric glue stick. Maybe I have another one here a second. That one was empty, so I need to get another one. Here we go. Okay, and I'm going to take my fabric glue stick. I like these little um, sew line. This one happens when I quilter select one, but it's only a quarter of an inch, and it gives me that little, you know, I've just got that little space between the batting and the, and the line. And I'm just going to take my glue stick all the way around between the batting and that stitching line. This works so much better than the tape. I have a really hard time with the tape. So then I'm going to lay this in, and I'm going to line up the outside stitching line with the edge of the fabric and it's going to lay in there just exactly in that line and I'm just going to stick it down to the glue stick and this is a fabric glue stick so it isn't going to damage your machine or get your needle all sticky works really well but I am going to make sure that I've got it all tacked down well and I'm just lining up the line with the edge Get that all stuck down okay now the one thing we are going to do is the, the next line would have been the tack down line for the fabric but it's also out here at the same size so i'm just going to skip step number four of the quilting because we really don't need to tack it down it's already glued down it's not going anywhere so i'm just going to use my little plus minus needle over here on my machine and I'm just going to go down to step number five which is the quilting okay so you can see well if I got, might need to put a little bit of glue here looks like this little edge is a little loose here so put a little extra glue down here there we go okay so now step number five is going to be the quilting so this is already this block is already the right size so we're just going to quilt it and then we'll use it um, to attach to this block. So that's, it's at the top of this block, the one that says, let me call you. And then um, it's all going to be quilted. I'm just going to trim it out of the hoop and leave the little, the little bit of stabilizer on the back. And then I need to look a little bit more at the instructions for the banner, and I'll be back to do the banner in a minute. Um, but I think we need to switch to a different size hoop. And I think it's going to be a five by seven. So I just need to go look at the instructions a little closer before we start that. But then we'll be ready to um, the last. Then we'll then we'll be ready to quilt the borders and the flanges. So that'll be the next video. We'll quilt borders and flanges. So it's just doing the quilting. So this is just a filler block, and the little banner is just going to kind of go over the top of this block. So. It kind of goes over the tree limb, I think, and then kind of across this block. So, so there wasn't really any embroidery on this other than the quilting. I thought that looked really cute. I like they put the little birdies on there. But so you can see, then this this, this works very easily. 
you often have to do this with like pieced blocks or if you have filler blocks like this that are already cut to size then you just do this method for the quilting and then they still fit in just perfectly so so it's about done and then like I said I'll, I'll turn the video off just for a moment I need to, to look at the instructions and I need to pull out the prep stabilizer I think this one uses tearaway heavy tearaway stabilizer yep so we're going to go move to a five by seven hoop I believe and then we're going to use tearaway stabilizer for the pennant and there's four letters it just says love across it so there's actually going to be four pieces of the pennant banner but um, I'll probably do one with you step by step and then I will do the other three off camera and come back and show you the whole thing and then uh, that'll be the end of video two part two for let me call you tweetheart I'm actually having a lot of fun working on this this is actually Christmas night and I came home from a lovely dinner with friends and I've been working on some, I've been hanging some pictures, and then I came in and I sat down to sew. This is very um, fun for me, and it's quiet here, and I've just been having a really good time working on this design. Okay, so there is the quilting for our filler block. And what I'll do, ooh, I don't even know if I can find it though. I'm just going to take this out of the hoop and all I'll do is just trim it with a pair of scissors or you can take your rotary cutter if you want to and just trim right along, you know, the edge of the fabric. I don't can't seem to find my scissors right at the moment, so I won't do it on camera. But then I will be back in a moment and I will show you how to do the love banner pennants. Okay, so I've got the parts to my love banner here. So we already did, oh, here, I, here's my block I trimmed out. I just laid it over here. So here's my little block after I trim, just trimmed around. I just trimmed the stabilizer off, and you can see the back. So this one's going to fit in above that, that larger flower block that we did at first. Okay, so there's that. And now we're going to do the banner. Now the banner is done in four pieces. So there's... The, there's four little pieces of felt. Now, I didn't happen to have the pink, so my banner is going to be lavender. So I have this real pretty lavender felt. And there's four pieces that are three by five and a half. And then you need some twine and some buttons. And that will be used when we go to put it together. So I'm going to set those aside for right now. And then this one you use tearaway stabilizer. So we're going to be using the five by seven hoop and the uh, tearaway stabilizer. They say heavy tearaway. I don't happen to have any heavy tearaway. This is my normal medium tearaway, so I figured this is going to be good enough because that's what I have. And it says to use sort of a visible thread, but mine's going to show the white, and I want my letters to be in white, so I think I'm just going to put my white thread in. And then um, the first step, so I've got my 5 by 7 hoop. I just hooped just the tearaway stabilizer. I've got bobbin thread in the bobbin, and I've got my white embroidery thread on the top. So I'm just going to go ahead, and we're going to get that design. Oh, sorry. I forgot to change my design before I put my smaller hoop in. Makes it mad. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our design. So there's four different designs. So the, the thing that's important about this is don't forget to change your design so you have all four letters and not the same one over and over. <laughs> I would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the, the word L, the letter L for love. So let's get that one first. Okay, so here is the letter L. So let's get L first. Okay, and set it. Okay, and then I'm going to hit embroidery. Okay, so there's the letter L. So we're going to do love. And the first step it says to stitch, and this is on page 28 of the instructions, it says to stitch the center cut fold line. So I'm actually going to stitch, there's just a line here. And then we're going to actually cut the stabilizer on that line. So that's one of those things that we normally don't do, <laughs> is to cut through our stabilizer, right? We're always like, oh, no, we don't want to cut through the stabilizer. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut through the stabilizer. So I'm going to take my scissors. 
I'm just going to use my regular um, double curved ones and I'm just going to trim through that stitching right on top of that stitching line. This is always kind of scary when you have to when you trim through your stabilizer. So I'm just going to go from one side to the other. That just says to go to trim right on it. And then it says to stitch the pennant placement line. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in. And I'm just going to leave my white thread in. And I'm going to stitch out my placement line that's going to show me where to put my felt. So that's the next step. This is step number three in the, in the instructions. And then it says to place the edges of the pennant felt along the pennant placement line. So we're just going to lay this in here. And I think I will put just a little bit of tape on this so that everything holds down nicely. Five by seven hoop, this one. So it's kind of nice. I'm just going to get that all lined up. Let's just put a little bit of tape on the top and the bottom just to hold it in place. I don't like to tape felt very well, but I'll just put just a little piece on the top and the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, and then it says to um, place the edges of the pennant felt along the pennant, pennant placement lines. We did that. And then step number five says using a visible thread color, stitch the pennant tack down trimming line. So we're not going to, it says do not trim the felt at this time. So we're going to do a trimming line here. And I think my white should show on my lavender. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the white. And I should be able to see that okay. So it's just going to stitch it down to the stabilizer. There we go. So we got that stitched down. So then step number four four is going to be the letter and they did theirs also in white so that's why I chose white but my my um, felt is actually a little bit darker so I thought the white would be fine for the other steps so this is going to be the letter L I'm going to stitch that out Okay, so we have the letter L in there. I'm going to go ahead and take this tape off now. Just have regular bobbin thread in the bobbin. Now it says to remove the hoop from the machine, cut the stabilizer along the top half of the pennant placement line beginning and ending at the center cut fold line. So in other words, we're going to cut the stabilizer away from here all the way around. So we don't want to cut the fabric, but we're going to cut the stabilizer away. So let's see if we can do this. So we're going to cut the stabilizer along this line here at the top. Cut away the stabilizer. So I'm just cutting on that line, that placement line that we made, okay, like that. And I'm going to end where that cut line was in the middle, okay, right there. All right, so let's see, I'm going to turn the page here, and then it says tuck the pennant felt through the hole cut in the stabilizer, okay? We can do that, so we're just going to bring this down and through the hole okay like that so it looks good and then it says to turn the hoop to the back fold the pennant felt down aligning the stitch lines smooth the felt into place and tape the corners okay so we can line line everything up and I'm just lining it up on these lines right here the stitch lines that are there and we're just going to line it all up okay and then whoops Got to get some more tape. My tape was kind of full of glitter. Imagine that, huh? I'm going to fold this down, and I'm going to lay that right on those lines. And then we're just going to tape across the corners here. Like that. Okay. 
Okay. And then it says to stitch the pennant final outline. Notice, note, the stitch leaves a quarter inch opening at the top of the pennant to insert the twine. So there's going to be a little, there's going to be like a little opening up here so we can take like a little needle and put our twine through there. So there we go. Okay, so we got it all lined up. I'm going to lay this in here again. Got it. And then it's going to stitch our little placement line. And I'm just going to leave my white in there. So it's going to make the little pennant shape now. Like that. Very cute. Okay. And then we're, that's the last step of the, the trimming or the uh, sewing. So then it says to trim the project on the outer stitch line. Do not cut along the folded edge of the pennant. So the first thing we're going to do, let me grab my other little scissors here. We're just going to cut this out on the, the square line here. Let me take it out of the hoop here. It'll be easier to trim. Like this. Let me take these tapes off so I have those to use again on the next one. Because we're going to do the same thing four times with the four different letters. Okay, so we're going to do this. So I'm going to trim around here. Let's just trim this off right along this trim line. And this is actually not going to be on there. We're just trimming this out to give us a nice clean edge here to work with. Like that. There, looks good. And then it says to trim or tear away the remaining stabilizer. So then we're going to grab, we're going to pull this open and we're going to pull this tear away stabilizer out of here. Hopefully. I think I'm going to trim on the inside. I didn't trim, I kind of trimmed on the line. So let's trim just inside of it so that it takes those stitches off. Then it'll be easier to get the stabilizer off. So I'm just going to trim a little bit closer in there. Got plenty of room, so we should be fine. That way we don't have to worry about those stitches being holding things together. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to tear. There we go. Now I can get into that. So we're going to tear the stabilizer away. That's in here. And it kind of tears up to the line. Pull it out. Okay. Do the best you can. If it's not perfect, it should be fine. Okay, so I got the stabilizer out of there. See, I got a little piece that still shows, but I think it'll be all right. Let me go to trim it. And then you're going to trim about, it says about an eighth of an inch away from the pennant final outline stitched in direction 10. So in other words, the little, the little, um, pennant shape. So I'm just going to use my scissors to do this. In fact, I might get my bigger ones. I don't do too well with rotary cutters. I usually miss. So I'm just going to cut mine. Okay. So I'm going to go up this way and about an eighth of an inch away from my cutting line. Okay. And then what they did is they kind of, looks like they kind of flattened off these edges. So they kind of went like this on that little edge and flatten them off like that. Okay, and then we'll do this side. So we're just going to trim down this side. And then flatten off the little corner here. Like that. What do you think? And then there's a little space in there. Just enough of a space in here that you can get like a needle in there. And we can pull our little twine through later when we're going to put it together. So let's see here. I'm going to see if I get my little point a little bit better. Not very good with points. There we go. So I might just clip that little tip off. There we go. Okay. So there's my first piece of my banner. And now I'm going to do this three more times with the O, B, and E. 
and it's going to be the same procedure so say that, that went real quick and then I will have my little banner so I'm just going to trim these little tails off here a little bit all right so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do those off camera and then I'll come on and show you my little banner isn't that cute so there, there's our first little little pennant for the for the love banner so I'll be back in a moment after I do O, V, and E. Okay, so I decided to do this one more time. I went ahead and did, so here's my L that we did at the beginning, and then I did O and V. And so where I'm going to do the E, I'm very, I've also been very proud of myself. I remembered to change the letter. So let's do the E together so that you can see this one more time. So I've got it ready to go, and the first step is going to be the little cutting line that goes across. I thought you'd like to see it one more time. It's always good to see it a couple of times, right? And you can go back and watch the video again. So I did the O and the V um, with the camera off, and then this is E. All right, so we're going to trim this little line right here through the stabilizer. This is tearaway. Let's trim this crossed and then the next step will be a placement line for the felt. Make sure I got a tail here because I had a little trouble with my thread wanting to come unthreaded there. So it's going to go across here and then we'll put our felt on. I gotta find my hmm, I'm not sure where I put my tape went so I guess I'll grab a couple more pieces here. Probably left it on the stabilizer from the last one, but these turned out so cute. I really like the lavender. Okay, so we're going to put our felt down in between, inside of that little placement line. Get it all lined up, and then we'll tape it down. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I got these pretty straight. Even so. Take that down, and then it's going to do a, the tack down line to hold this all down to the stabilizer. And then we'll do the letter. But the white seemed to work fine. Now, if you're using the pink, it may not show very much, so you may need to use a darker color here where you can see. But the lavender um, with the white shows fine. Okay. So then the next step is going to be the letter. So I'm going to go ahead and do the letter next. Just leave my white in. Get the letter E. So this is the letter E. So I've got all my letters done. And then these are going to be strung on a piece of twine with some little buttons. So I'll just put them inside my little... Uh, baggie that I had for my all my fabrics and everything and then I will will do that when we do the assembly and the embellishments so I'll put those in there but those are those are really cute that's really cute and I was proud because I actually got all of the letters done without having to stop and do it over again because I chose the right letter, so I got my letters. So don't forget to choose your letters as you're going. Okay, so then we're going to do, we're going to turn this over. I'm going to take the tape off here. I'm going to turn this over to the back, and we're going to trim along that placement line on the top. So just trim along that placement line on the top so we can flip this through the hole. So it's the outside line. Trim along there. Let's see what I'm, where I'm trimming here. There we go. And then I'm going to fold this down through the hole and line up the bottom placement line so everything lines up nicely. And I found that if I just kind of pinch this in the center, it gets a nice nice little crease there then okay and then we'll just tape these corners down on the back this is the back of the hoop and then we'll flip this over i'm just going to press down on that a little bit more and then the next step we'll do the little v and then we'll trim along that 
were fun. Very fun. They looked very daunting because there was a lot of instructions. So I wasn't sure exactly how it worked, but this, this worked out very easily. And this is the last block. We did all six in two videos. And then in the next video, we will do the quilting on the borders and the flanges. Okay, so we're going to pull this out of the hood. Oops, here. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim. And I found that I have to trim like just on the inside of those stitches because I need to be able to pull the stabilizer out. So that worked better. I got a little too close the first time and kind of trimmed right on. So you kind of need to be inside the stitches so that it's open to get a hold of that stabilizer. There we go. And then let me get this out of my way. Then I'm going to open the sides up and I'm going to reach up into the corner here and I'm going to grab that tear away and pull it out of there. Try to get it right up to the stitching lines. Oops. Just had a little spot down here I didn't get. Okay. So if there's a little bit showing, you can kind of go back and get it out. You don't want any, any of that to show. Pull this open. Must have not got, it must have gotten not quite close enough on the bottom here, so we'll trim this bottom a little bit more. There we go. Okay, now we can get to that. Pull that stabilizer out of there. Okay. Got that. And then we'll go ahead and trim about an eighth of an inch from that final stitching line. Do that side. Do that side. And I just kind of blunt did a little bit of a blunt end on mine because mine were kind of goofy looking on the ends and I'm going to just blunt these corners off too so that they're kind of flat on the side like that. So there is the E. So we have our little love banner that we're going to string on that little piece of of um, twine and then put some there'll be some little buttons in there so isn't that cute so there's the little love banner so that was the last block we quilted the block for the last block and now we're ready to go on to the borders and the flanges so in the next video we'll do those and quilt them and then the last video will be the assembly and the embellishments thanks for joining me for the second video of um, let me call you tweetheart good night